change the amount of angle um, or turn that's going to be within the fastener. And so, uh, again, the uh, the idea of error proofing is adding additional layers uh, that we can uh, look for as far as different variables to make sure that the, uh, the, the process gets done correctly. And so uh, with those two cases, um, that would be one instance of uh, the angle not being met correctly. The other would be uh, if the fastener was stripped. Um, obviously, we would go past the rotation uh, if we would uh, be taking a look at the total number of angles. So in, in the example that I mentioned, um, let's say we have a, a torque value of uh, say five Newton meters um, and we have a total a rotation of five uh, full revolutions, that's 1800 degrees. So we could say um, our torque value needs to be five uh, Newton meters and we could set a window say 1700 to 1900 uh, degrees of rotation needs to happen within that rundown for that to be considered a good rundown. Uh, if we went outside of those, those values with the angle, then we would receive notification that there was an error. So again, with the, the system uh, as well, there are some other um, programmable tolerances that we can put into the rundown to see if that was done correctly. Uh, we can put limits on the uh, torque that is achieved uh, it must meet within a certain percentage um, of the target for that to be considered a good rundown. Uh, we can also help guide the operator with the use of the tool. So we can set uh, an error by chance if, if the operator um, is running the tool uh, and let's go with the handle. They may not, uh, they may think that that was a good rundown. Uh, the, the system did its job, uh, but in essence, there wasn't torque achieved, we can set a, a, a setting that would uh, produce an error when the handle was let go before the torque up event uh, was fully completed. So there's a number of different things that we can do uh, within the programming of just the normal fastening process that can help alert us if there's any errors. Um, the system itself allows us to have 15 different presets within a, a specific uh, range of tool. Um, and with that, we also have the ability uh, to set up uh, jobs or models within that process, where we can also do screw counting to make sure that the assembly process that uh, is being done for that particular assembly, that those uh, items uh, are fully counted to make sure that it is fully seated. Now with the uh, model function and job function, you can think of it like if we were building in a cell type of an environment where we had different fasteners that may have different torque values. Um, and so if we had a series of five fastenings at one preset, we could then uh, have another set of say three fasteners at another preset. And we can program the tool to run the first preset for five. Once it gets five good fastenings, it will then index to the next preset uh, within the within the job or model, and uh, it will automatically change and then run for the uh, required amount of fastenings. We can also add additional layers in there of uh, the adding a barcode uh, to that system. So the operator would scan a barcode. It would automatically pull up that model or job assembly, uh, and it would not allow the operator to move forward in doing another job or another assembly until all of the fasteners uh, for that particular uh, process have been fully completed. So um, as, as it relates to uh, process control, we can include um, other peripheral devices in here to help us uh, make sure that uh, we're minimizing any type of error during the assembly process. So uh, with that, we also have uh, the ability to use uh, digital um, inputs and outputs uh, as part of the uh, job or model function. So if an assembly process uh, requires the operator uh, to rotate a part, um, we can communicate halfway through that particular job or assembly process. Um, and that would allow us then to make sure that those fastenings were done before the part was rotated. So. Uh, the entire, uh, I guess, error proofing um, concept as it relates to DC tools is the fact, 
again, that we have the ability to gather so much information that's happening during the particular fasting process. Uh, and we can put limits, uh, we can put uh, specific examples and uh, cues that would alert us that the operator uh, has not fully completed or has completed the operation correctly. And so um, with that, uh, that's kind of the overview uh, broad primer for what's going to be uh, happening again uh, in our session at uh, 1230 Eastern and also at 130 Eastern. Uh, where we're going to take a look at the controller uh, for uh, the EC and ECT products. Uh, we're going to just look at what the basic setup of that is. Uh, we'll then uh, move in to the different uh, ports that are available on the uh, controller, uh, how those uh, get set up, um, and then we'll be looking at how we can navigate through the system, set up uh, some simple uh, presets, and uh, help walk through that particular set of process. And so uh, right now we'll go ahead and um, we'll have, if you've got any questions uh, regarding the system or uh, error proofing in general, um, there are uh, some other uh, items that we can add to this uh, system that can help um, increase that layer of uh, error proofing um, as it relates to position control for the screwdriver uh, would be the system or the driver itself is in a particular location uh, to provide power. We can also add additional items uh, like bit socket trays uh, and things like that to help uh, guide the operator through the assembly process to make sure that everything is getting done correctly. So if you have any questions right now, feel free to type them into the chat and uh, we'll do our best to answer those for you uh, right now. So. Casey, if we've got any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. I am looking right now. There's not anybody in there yet, so I'll give them some time to type. So I have one question here from Todd. It is, do you have an open protocol communication option? Uh, yes, there is um, open uh, mod or there is open protocol that is available on the system. Uh, also Modbus uh, protocol is available um, on these controllers um, for uh, any type of data collection that, um, that we can uh, gather from the fastening events. Um, we can do that uh, and communicate those um, we can communicate uh, to bring a different uh, preset or uh, a different build or model that uh, would be needed within a, uh, a PLC communication. Um, so we do have uh, those functionalities with the system uh, as well as uh, access through the ethernet uh, port that's on there or also the RS-232 port uh, on the controller, but that's for uh, later today. <laughs> All right. It looks like I have another question that we might answer later today, but Dave would be the expert on this. It says, with the open protocol com option, does it stream all the data fields out or just some of them? So uh, with this system, um, you can select which data fields uh, you would like um, to see. So if you want the, uh, the torque, if there was an error, the total amount of angle, um, the total time for the rundown, um, all of that. Uh, there are a number of different fields that you can select um, to have those stream um, automatically out to the unit, or they could be called uh, for um, based on uh, some communication uh, that you can use uh, through uh, the different protocols to access information um, on demand. So. All right, Dave, that looks like that is everything that we have um, for right now. Um, we will have another session um, in about an hour. Dave, do you want to tell them a little bit about that? Yeah, um, as I mentioned, um, we're going to be uh, taking a look at the setup, uh, what the basic um, items are that uh, you may need uh, for this. Um, and then once it 
the item may be received, uh, what you're going to want to do uh, to get that ready to be operational. So uh, that will be our first uh, session here at, uh, again, at 12.30 Eastern. And then at 1.30, we'll look at um, diving into the system, uh, navigating through the different uh, menu functions, uh, and then we'll be setting up uh, some presets and uh, doing some functionality uh, testing with the, uh, with the system. So that's what we got on deck for later today. All right, that sounds really good, Dave. Um, thank you guys all for attending this first session. Um, we just sent out an email around 7.30 that has all of the different session links on it. Just scroll to the bottom of that email and click on the links for the individual sessions. Um, and then we can, um, then you'll be able to join those sessions as we go on demand. Um, we are still accepting registrations for this webinar as well. If you have anybody um, at your facility who would like to attend, feel free to send them that registration link and I'd be happy to get them added. Um, ASAP so they can attend as well. All right, and with that, we'll see you later this afternoon. And then, yes, I just saw a question from, from Todd. We do have cordless tools um, and we will um, be covering that a little bit later today. Uh, yeah, actually the cordless tools are scheduled for tomorrow. Oh, cordless tools tomorrow, Todd. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. I will see you guys in a few minutes. Take care.